Good morning. It's a great pleasure to be back, and thank you for inviting me and allowing me to sample the latest Chicago hotels as we do this. So uh, I'm going to speak in a very practical way about where I think we are with active surveillance today. And I want to start out by just being sure we're all on the same page with the definition of a small renal mass, which is an entity. It's the clinical entity that leads to a diagnosis of kidney cancer in more than half of our cases now, and these are asymptomatic, uh, and I would say less than four centimeters uh, that are incidentally detected on imaging, and they look like renal cell carcinoma, but importantly, they're not always uh, renal cell carcinoma. And we've known uh, for a long time that these can grow very slowly. We know the three centimeter rule in the VHL population that Marsden Linehan and company have uh, supported with evidence. They've never seen a metastatic event in a growing VHL renal cell carcinoma, which are clear cell, as you know, uh, under three centimeters. We've known that there's been an autopsy prevalence of this entity, which indicates slow growth. And we grew up as uh, students learning about about Bell's adenoma, which were small RCCs found incidentally and were categorized as different than renal cell carcinoma. And lastly, the Bosniak observations. So um, there are a number of autopsy reports. Anything that we find incidentally at autopsy indicates that there is a, an indolent nature to it. We know that uh, full well from prostate cancer. Uh, Bell's adenoma has only relatively recently dropped out, but it was an autopsy observation as well, that there were rarely metastatic events. And then most recently, Morton Bosniak at NYU looking in the x-ray bags of patients undergoing kidney surgery would find old films that showed that there was a mass in the kidney and of course in those days they weren't always as uh, quality as we have now but we learned that these tumors can be on occasion present for a long time. So that led us in uh, Canada and others have done somewhat similar work looking at uh, active surveillance and that means actively watching the tumor and treating it only if it progressed uh, in a cohort of uh, patients uh, across the country and we published that and uh, like others we showed there was a relatively slow growth rate. So that's old history. The current era in my opinion and we'll hear more about that in a few minutes is that we biopsy these patients and we diagnose what this small renal mass is. Um, so we're very comfortable now with biopsy. I was interested to see the voting on that uh, opportunity and every time I see that vote, say at annual intervals, about double the proportion of the audience are responding that they're using biopsy. And we know this is safe. It does require a pretty skilled group of, uh, of pathologists, imagers, and uh, others to interpret. But at least 80% of these are going to be diagnostic. And we're now on occasion doing what we call the B2, the second biopsy, if we have a, a, a non-diagnostic first biopsy, and the same success rate. So we get up in the high 90s now with these. And uh, we've learned that there are limitations, that the uh, tumors can understage clinically, can understage pathologically at surgery. There is an element of upgrading heterogeneity, things that you know and oncocytic cells remain problematic. But Based on that, we've looked at a cohort now of about 103 patients from our original group who had biopsies, and we've followed them, albeit for relatively short time on average, but many of these long-term follow-up. And <clears throat> we've found that, not surprisingly, most still are clear cell, but that the these are patients, by the way, that are biopsy cancers, uh, that there is about a quarter of them are papillary uh, and really just slightly different from what you would see with a uh, nephrectomy series. So this, this data has been quite interesting. It's relatively early on, but here is a growth curve in red of clear cells, uh, which are, are growing, and the uh, turquoise line are papillary tumors, papillary type 1 tumors, which don't grow. So right off the bat, there is a difference in the two biggest uh, subsets of this population. And if we look at bigger or smaller tumors, the top line are presenting as larger than two centimeters. Growth rate's roughly the same. And we've looked at it from older and younger, and we don't see a statistically significant difference, although there's a trend in older patients, ironically,
chronically to grow faster than the younger patients. So this is the meat of it. These are um, the growth rates uh, expressed as progression-free uh, survival or probability, which is something we're all very familiar with. And you can see in black that when a biopsy-proven clear cell carcinoma is followed over time, that by four years, about half of them have progressed. Now, progression is going to be a somewhat arbitrary definition. In this case, it was rapid growth and or reaching four centimeters. Whereas the top line are papillary tumors, and you can see none of these patients have progressed, and we have follow-up to eight years uh, in uh, a couple of these patients. Um, and when we look at it just simply in diameter, that uh, is a fairly clear definition based on our staging, you can see that the clear cells now expressed in red are also progressing uh, as uh, different from the papillaries. So that's the natural history that we see in these patients on surveillance by specific tumor subtype. Now when we put that on the population who we are seeing with kidney cancer, many of whom are older, we know that there's a high rate of comorbidity, a high rate of death from other causes in this population. So just a couple of statistics there that people over 70, and I, I won't cite the references, have a 30% chance, these are people with uh, small renal masses have a 30% chance of dying of other causes. Um, if they have a greater than two Charlson comorbidity index, the treatment does not appear to confer benefit. And patients that are over 75, and I think this is Rob Uzo's uh, report, have a greater chance of dying of other cancers than their kidney tumor, and uh, they have a much greater chance of dying of uh, other non-cancers. Uh, so our conclusions at the present with a new small renal mass, and I've used a superscript RCC to, to indicate that it's been characterized by biopsy. The papillaries, as I said, don't progress in the short term, but more than half or at least half of the clear cells do uh, progress, uh, but slowly. So we can personalize the management of these patients, and I think it's pretty clear now that we're on safe ground in the older population, whether that's 70 or 75. To me, 75 looks older than 70, um, and obviously the infirm population, if they are, even if they are clear cell. Um, we might carry this to a younger set of patients in the uh, papillary group, and I think it's clear we can do initial active surveillance in this population uh, in all patients, and we don't need to alter their lives or our lives to have earlier management, and we have a, a greater window to preserve kidney function. So that window of opportunity for partial nephrectomy, for example, I think is much wider than we had uh, appreciated previously. Now, we, uh, putting this in a cartoon, we've got a small tumor in a kidney that is more or less uh, healthy, and I haven't touched on that. There's a kidney on the other side, and of course there's the host, so we need to be complete in how we assess these patients. A couple of uh, final comments. How do we follow these patients? There is no standard way to do this. We try to use ultrasound as opposed to more expensive and potentially hazardous imaging technologies, particularly in this group where renal function isn't always excellent. And we tend to image them quite, well, I think, frequently at three and six months uh, initially just to get some sense of kinetics. Um, and uh, if there's any uncertainty, we'll do it again at nine months, but we'll move quickly to annual uh, follow-ups. Uh, our triggers for treatment, though, are poorly understood at this time, and we tend to use size and kinetics, and the kinetics based on the evidence that where there has been metastases in small renal masses, that is, they presented that way and went on to metastatic disease, these seem to be in patients who have a rapid initial growth pattern, and we do not have a good biologic marker at the present in urine or any form of virtual biopsy or the biopsy itself, which is a relatively small amount of tissue to work with. Uh, lastly, just this worry, the lack of a safety net for renal cell carcinoma. It's not like testicular cancer where we can quite comfortably manage a patient who is at quite a high risk of metastases because we know we can salvage them uh, in prostate and in kidney. 
uh, we don't have that safety net. But it does appear to be very unusual for a patient to present with a small renal mass, with a normal chest x-ray, no other symptoms, who goes on to metastasize under active surveillance. And it's probably 1% to 2% at most, and usually with initial active growth as a marker. So thank you very much for allowing me just to overview and update this.